Who were the Pharisees? The Pharisees were a sect of Judaism which started 167 BC and was a predominant school of thought during the Second Temple period. After the destruction of the Second Temple in 70 CE, Pharisaic beliefs became the foundation of Rabbinic Judaism. The main theology of the Pharisees is they held to the Oral Torah in addition to Scripture. Every Jewish community had their own version of Oral Torah, which governed their religious practices. They held the Oral Torah was simultaneously given to Moses at Sinai. Note the other sects like the Sadducees rejected this, recognizing only the written law. Fortunately for us, these teachings were eventually written down for us to look at. Because Jesus constantly rejected the doctrines of the scribes and Pharisees, calling them traditions of man, invalidating the word of God, warning them of hell. The written law forbids adding to scripture. Deuteronomy 4.2 reads, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and judgments which I teach you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God your fathers has given you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. In spite of this, Pharisees taught traditions of man. Good example is the marriage covenant issue. Regarding marriage, Jesus was very strict regarding the issue of man divorcing his covenant spouse and remarrying somebody else. This is adultery. Man is not to divorce at all and marry another. Deuteronomy 24 reads, When a man takes a wife and marries her, it happens she finds no favor in his eyes because he found some uncleanness in her, and he writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of his house. When she has departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce and puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies who took her as his wife, then the former husband who divorced her must not take her back to be his wife after she has been defiled, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. Again, Jesus did away with Deut Deuteronomy 24 because it was not what God intended. He pointed back to Adam and Eve. It was always one man and one woman in covenant of marriage. Deuteronomy 24 was given because of the hardness of their hearts by Moses. And to divorce one's covenant spouse and marry somebody else is adultery. Adulterers do not enter the kingdom. The Pharisees, however, taught something else. This is a good source, the Mishnah, written by Herbert Dansby. This is writ a written source that tells us what they were teaching. They were, there were different schools of Pharisees with various ideas, and these cannot possibly be the word of God because they directly contradict one another. It's obvious these are opinions of man. For example, the school of Shammai say a man may not divorce his wife unless he is found in chastity in her, for it is written because he has found in her indecency in anything. And the school of Hillel say he may divorce her, even if she spoiled a dish for him, for it is written because he hath found in her indecency in anything. Rabbi Akiba says, even if he found another fairer than she, for it is written, it shall be if she find no favor in his eyes. Number two, if a man divorces his wife and said to her, Thou art free to marry any man excepting such a one, Rabbi Eliezer permits it, but the sages forbid it. What should he do? He should take it from her and give her to her again, say, Lo, thou art free to marry any man. If he had so written therein, even if he erased it, he remains invalid. Number three. 
These are good examples. If a man divorced his wife, she lodged with him in an inn, the school of Sham, I say, she does not need from him a second bill of divorce. And the school of Hillel says, she needs a second bill of divorce from him. Next, if a man threw a bill of divorce to his wife while she was in her house or in her courtyard, she's divorced. If he threw it to her while she was in his house or courtyard, even though she was with even though he was with her in bed, she is not divorced. But if he threw it into her bosom or her basket, she's divorced. The school of Shammai say a man may dismiss his wife with an old bill of divorce, and the school of Hillel forbid it. What is an old bill of divorce? If he continued alone with her after he had written it for her, it becomes an old bill of divorce. The Pharisees were completely apostate from the law of Moses. Stephen also echoed this when he told the Sanhedrin they didn't follow the law either. Read Acts 7, 51 through 53. Part 2. Paul counted everything he learned as a Pharisee as rubbish. Not only that, he had to deal with unbelieving Jews, Pharisees and Sadducees, who rejected Christ. He is lamenting how most of Israel has rejected Christ, even wishing he could substitute himself for them, much in the same way as Moses tried to atone for the disobedient idol worshippers of his day. Then Paul had to deal with the false apostles, the Judaizers, teaching another gospel of works of the law for salvation. It's quite remarkable how Paul walked away from false religion and came to know the Lord and became an apostle of Christ. Part 3. Trying to reach out to unbelieving modern Jews. Point number one. Understand that they are taught by the rabbis and learn traditions of man which will not save. Show them what the Mishnah says. It's a real eye-opener. They have strayed very far from the Old Testament scriptures. The opinions in the Mishnah conflict and contradict one another. There is no way they can be authoritative. This is why Jesus was so hard on the Pharisees and the religious order, because they taught traditions of man over the word of God. Point number two. Point people to the Old Testament, which points to Jesus. Then point them to the Gospels, because the Gospels will show how the Old Testament prophecies of Messiah's first coming was fulfilled. Some will be saved in this way. Please read Acts 17, 10 through 12. Then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness, and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed, and not also not a few of the Greeks, prominent women and men as well. Point number three. Most don't study at all. They just want to do the religious stuff, just like Christians, and they're not serious. You need to pray for them to be saved so that Jesus will show up and give them a last chance to choose life, even at the very end. Summary. Plant the message of Jesus to them. Tell them he is the Messiah prophesied in the Old Testament. He is coming back to fulfill the end of the age prophecies. But point them to the Old Testament because it leads to Jesus. Then the New Testament will quickly show them how Jesus fulfilled his first coming prophecies. Acts 17, 10 through 12 tells us, Many came to believe by seriously studying the Old Testament scriptures. Finally, pray for those who won't come to him. Sooner or later, everyone meets Jesus and finds out he is God, the Christ, the only way to the Father. Everyone will bow the knee to him, for all authority in heaven and earth has been given to the Son. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life, and the door of salvation. Philippians 2, 5-11 reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and those under earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's better to realize Jesus is the only way for eternal life now. Sooner or later, everyone finds out. God bless.